Al Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah, he said in a statement, Ya ayyuha shabab, O young men and women, I'malu lil akhirah, work for the akhirah. For verily I found in my life that anyone who works for the akhirah, Allah also gives him the dunya. Then he continues and he says, But I've never ever found in my life that anyone who works for the dunya ever gets anything from the akhirah. If you work your nine to five day to day life, busy earning a livelihood, busy paying for your house, busy paying for your rent, then that is the curse that you have earned by your own hands. But if you have the power and the courage to make the step to work for the cause of Allah Azawajal, then assure it, then take the glad tidings that Allah will be enough for your, for your dunya. It is reported in the books of Ibn Abi Dunya rahimahullah in Hulyat al-Awliya and also reported by Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah in his fatawa that he quotes Sufyan ibn Uwayna rahimahullah, the Imam of Ahlul Makkah saying that when the scholars used to write to each other, they used to write the following three sentences to each other. When the scholars used to write letters to each other, advising each other to fear Allah, what did they used to write? They used to write three sentences to each other all the time. They used to write, Man aslaha sariratahu aslahallahu ala niyatahu. Whoever fixes his secret affairs at night, Allah will fix his public affairs. Woman aslaha ma baynahu wa baynallah. Whoever fixes that which is between him and Allah, aslahallahu ma baynahu wa bayna nas. Allah will fix that which is between him and people. وَمَنْ عَمِلَ لِآخِرَتِهِ كَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْ دُنْيَاهُ And the third thing that they used to say is whoever works for his akhirah, Allah will be enough for his dunya. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we are surrounded by people who do not realize the value of these statements, who do not understand how beautiful this statement is, that to work for the akhirah is to liberate yourself. That to be a slave to Allah Azawajal is liberation from slavery to everything else. That to work for Akhirah, to work in a dawah project, to work inviting people to Islam, to work as a teacher of Islam, to work to study Islam, or an Islamic project that benefits the Muslim Ummah. Ya ikhwati, they are the people who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala suffices them in their life. When I used to live in Australia as a medical doctor, I used to earn a good income as a medical doctor, being a senior registrar in the emergency department in Gold Coast Hospital. But my life was after money. I went from job to job, earning more money to more money. And wallahi, as more money came in, my needs went up. Suddenly we needed a new car. Suddenly we needed a second car. Suddenly the children had to go to public from public schools to private schools. Suddenly we needed to live in a better home. Suddenly we needed to go for a more expensive holiday. Suddenly all that extra money went away. And when it came for Hajj, I didn't have extra money to go for Hajj. When it came to take my family for Umrah, I had no extra money. When it came for Sadaqah and Ramadan, I had nothing but zakat to give. Ye ikhwati, don't lead such a life. It is a cursed life. Don't lead such a life, I can tell you. As a doctor, I earn far more than many people make in their own jobs. But it's a cursed life because your needs go up at the same time. But rather work for the Akhirah, ya ikhwati. Even if less comes to you, your needs will be less and your contentment is far more. Who is there that can compare to the contentment of a slave of Allah Azawajal when he works from the Akhirah being free of the needs of this dunya? Who is there that can, can compare to the contentment and the love between a husband and wife that is helping each other to work for the Akhirah when their needs are less and their happiness in their hearts are more. Who is there that can compare with this ikhwati? No one can. My brothers and sisters in Islam, look at the happiness of the Prophet Wasallam, the man who used to give the giving of someone who never ever feared poverty. Ya Bilal, anfiq, wala takhsha min dhil arshi iqlala. My Shaykh, may Allah have mercy upon him, used to say, Look at how much Allah has given his enemies. Look at how much Allah has given his enemies to fight his religion. Look at how much Allah has given his enemies to kill Muslims, to destroy Islam, to try and harm Islam. 
Do you think, O oh Muslim, the one who is in the party of Allah, the helper of Allah, that Allah will withhold his money from you? If you work for Vodafone, does Q-Mobile pay for your salary? If you work for Vodafone, Vodafone pays for your salary. So if you work for Allah, why do you think your boss pays your salary, Ikhwati? It is Allah who pays for it. Your boss is merely a means and a tools. Our work today, our professions are merely tools, means for the wealth that Allah has already written for us to come to us. And wallahi, if we didn't have this job, had something else, even the same thing, the same risk that Allah has written would come to us, nothing could stop it. 